Uh, Pete from Kroll. Uh, what this video is about is a quick overview of the BR-10 uh, burner gun. Um, so this is uh, just a quick introduction to the BR-10 and the major bits and pieces on it. Um, okay, the first thing is um, when these BR-10s arrive at a customer site, we set them up for the correct flame length for the air furnace or the uh, boiler that they're going to be fitted in. However, um, what is adjusted at the factory are uh, two elements, the oil and the air. This silver wheel here sets the flame length and you can check the power rating of this silver wheel setting from the, um, from the Kroll uh, user guide. It has all the approximate power ratings of the silver wheel. Now, of course, the air window on the side here, and you might want to come in a bit if you want to, Pete, that air window is set so that there's no black smoke at all um, on the particular flame setting. So if the flame needs to be increased a little bit, you'll have to open up the air a little bit. So it's the old air-oil combination. And we advise uh, customers and clients that you trim the air until the gun just starts to put black smoke out of the flue. That's the, um, that's the point at which it's just running rich and then just give it about one or two more millimetres on the side window and then it should be, um, should be fine. Okay, um, other points of interest is down here we've got the uh, oil supply line. Now uh, plumbers and, and clients, when you're um, commissioning the, the burner gun, you obviously have to have oil present in your fuel line here. And you can see we've got a torch here. And what you have to do is check that the oil comes out of this, into this degassing pipe. Okay, and the best thing to do is have a cheap torch sitting nearby, and you might want to come in, Pete, to see that if you can get that in the shot, that there is in fact oil present in this degassing pipe. The top of the oil here will always be at the same height as the uh, day tank level. Okay, so our day tank is pretty much on about uh, five foot uh, on that level there. <coughs> okay, so that's the degassing pipe. Very important, also very important everyone, that you try and keep this as straight as possible. The reason is that if there's a bend in it, the oil can sit inside the degassing, inside the preheat tank down here, and it can't escape because there's too much back pressure or flow resistance. Okay, so try and keep that first 200 to 400 mils straight and you won't have any problems. Okay, just another quick thing on the side here is the Y strainer and that's like a final filter everybody. Um, and that filters um, uh, any oil that's feeding into the internal pump that's behind this uh, silver wheel. There's also a major or a coarse strainer uh, in the front of the burner gun. I'd suggest you look at that in the book and um, that has to be um, cleaned every two to three months, for example, with normal waste oil. Okay, the next thing is up here on the top of the burner gun, there's two big black boxes. This guy here is the ignition transformer and that ignition transformer produces a spark inside near the nozzle across the electrodes of the uh, of the burner at startup time. This guy here is the brain or the controller. It's got a button here that's called a flight failure button. If that button turns red, then the burner gun has failed an ignition and has gone out for safety reasons. This controller manages the ignition, the electric motor, and something we haven't talked about yet is this solenoid valve over here. This solenoid valve normally opens up after about five to 10 seconds once the motor starts. What makes the motor start? What asks the burner gun to start? Well, there's a pair inside this seven pin connector plug that's called the T122 pair. When the boiler thermostat or the room thermostat puts a short circuit across that, it's called for heat and the gun will attempt to start up. Okay, so right now we've got our thermostat in our big air furnace here is calling for heat now, but 
it hasn't started up because this little silver toggle switch on the side here is in the off position. I'll put it on now and we'll get Pete to walk in and take a shot of the flame. Okay everybody, you can hear the motor spinning up. There's always a delay of about 12 seconds. You might see Pete quickly. It's blinking orange, that means it's in a uh, purging cycle. This will last for about 10 seconds. Drop back down there, Pete, and let's have a look at the ignition. Okay, so what you can see there is a nice orange flame, and what Pete can show you here is a nice green, a nice green, green for good uh, colour on this particular um, Siemens controller. Okay, another thing um, that Pete just mentioned to me, everybody, is that the Depending what model you've got and what controller you've got, this preheat tank, if you put your hand on the top of there, that should be on standard waste oil, quite warm to touch. So it should be up at about 45 to 50 degrees. Some of the, uh, some of the newer burning burner uh, guns, uh, plumbers and installers, um, will have an automatic delay until the gun start up, starts up. And that delay is pretty much based on this pre-heat tank getting up to uh, around about 80 degrees centigrade and then the gun is permitted to start. Okay, so thanks very much. Um, just one very brief uh, thing at the end. All burner guns of this style uh, have a safety sensor or PE cell, photoelectric cell. If I remove the photoelectric cell from the side here, the burner gun shuts the oil supply down and will eventually go into a red or flame fail situation. Uh, this is by design and for safety reasons.